u rukometu. Sa svojim bogatim znanjem svakako će doprinjeti ovogodišnjem seminaru i trenera. Prvo predavanje na rasporedu je sada, drugo je sutra. The podi is yours. Here you go. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lars Boysen Mikalcik. Good morning, everyone. And welcome. My name is and the title of my speaking today is Physical Training Principles in Team Handball Anaerobic Training. You might know that I'm from Denmark, so I don't speak Croatian. So, uh, my lecture is going to be in English. However, uh, there will be a small part of it which will be translated. Uh, and a couple of times in my lecture, there will be room for questioning. And you can raise your question in Croatian, and that will be translated to the answers. Also, when we are talking about the key points of the different kinds of training, that will be translated as well. Kada budemo došli do nekih ključnih točaka u vezi sa anaerobnim treningom, odnosno vrstama anaerobnog treninga, također ćemo to prevesti na hrvatski. In addition, you hopefully also know that I've been writing a little article about anaerobic training, and this article has been translated into Croatian language. Of this, this is fine. Fine. And, and it has, and it has been, been on the website, website of the Red Hat Foundation for a couple, couple of weeks. weeks. So, so I, I hope that everybody has read, read this article in order, order to prepare for this lecture. This lecture. Okay. In Denmark, which is also a little country, we are very impressed over Croatia. Actually, it is the top league in the world in different kinds of games. Soccer. You beat us in the semi-final in the World Cup in 2018. You are very good in water polo and of course you are very good in team handball. Mi smo u Danskoj zapravo već dugo godina impresionirani uspjesima hrvatskih sportaša u igrama s lotom. Dakle, polufinale 2018. godine u Nogometu i sada nedavno osvajanje brončane medalje u Waterpolu i naravno u Rukometu su postignuti veliki uspjesi. Of course, it has been most of the 
men's team, but recently the women's team uh, also have shown some, some world class. Uglavnom, dakle, se radi o muškim ekipama, o mumčadima, ali evo, u posljednje vrijeme su i žene počele postizati više uspjeha u rukometu. In the 80s and the 90s, up to 2000, then there was always a team from Europe, also Yugoslavia and Rangers, not because we were not technically and technically good, but we could cope with the business strength, the business fitness of the players in East Europe. In the 80s and 90s, and in the 2000s, the Danes was the main part of the game with the Mons from Eastern Europe, especially with the team from Yugoslavia and later Croatia. I to ne zato što bismo bili slabi i tehničko tatkoče pripravili, što bismo manje znali, već nismo jednostavno bismo znali soprotstati i stazi koju su te momčati imali. Dakle, ono što sada možemo reći, to je da je sada hrvatska reprezentacija nešto slabije klasirana u posljednje vrijeme, a Danska se uzvidla i evo tri puta je bila na vrhu natjecanja tri godina zarada. Dakle, pogledajte da danas danske igrače, to su dvečki koji su vrlo stažni, vrlo brzo trče, reagiraju brzo, visoko skaču i imaju jake šutere. Besides having a very well-developed tattoo system, we in Denmark believe that we have changed something in order to have the system we have today. Dakle, ako se vratimo na one neuspjeha ranije, mi smo shvatili da moramo mijenjati nešto u režimima treninga kako bismo se mogli suprotstaviti jačim ekipama i uspostavili smo jedan vrlo organizirani sustav. 我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这里，我们在这
Dakle, ono što mi je radili, što smo napravili u tome sustavu je da smo prikupili iskustva, empirijska iskustva i podatke iz zdravstvenih istraživanja kako bismo napravili zapravo jedan optimalan sustav treniranja. And you probably know that the performance in team handball is dependent on four main factors. The technical, the tactical, the mental, and also the physical. Znate da se uspišno struko metu kao i svakom sportu sastoji zapravo od četiri faktora. Tehničkog znanja, vještine, taktičke vještine i znanja, mentalne snage i what is the force? And as you see here, the part of the performance which is dependent on the physical aspect is more today than 10 years ago. Da je komponenta fizičko, tjelesno u uspješnosti ruku u rukometu postaje sve važnija i danas je važnija više nego ikada prije. We have the new rules, the quick quick throw off, the rule of the pass play, and everybody can see that the team handball play is much more intense with a lot of physical concentration compared to just 10 years ago. Dakle, promjena pravila donijela je apsolutno to stretanje prema fizijom tjelesnosti rukometa, posebno sa ovim brzim centrom, pa postaje sve važnije izgraditi snažno i brzo igrača. So, just to know, it's very important that you know that high quality training is not the same as far as training. Dakle, visoko kvalitetni trening nije isto što i onaj trening do maksimalnog iscrpljenja. Vi možete imati vrlo visoko kvalitetan trening i da nakon kojega igrači ne trebaju i ne moraju biti potpuno iscrpljeni. And in addition, it's very important that the physical training are being transferred to men's education. That's why we need a lot of structural training with the ball on the ball, even strength training. Dakle, i to je jedan od razloga zašto sve više trebamo funkcionalni trening, ne onaj formalni, nego funkcionalni trening koji se provodi u loptom, na igralištu, u situacijama koje su slične stvarnoj utakmici i stvarnim događajima na terenu. Our main goal is that the strength is not the ABA takes one of the kids in the squad. Our main goal is to strength fast and jump high. Dakle, čak se i vježne snage rade loptom, jer nama glavni cilj u rukometru nije podići 200 kila iz čušnja, već nam je cilj što brže doći do mala i zabiti do mala. I can feel the progresiv here today, because if you train today like yesterday, you will be high high tomorrow. Dakle, želio bih vas malo provocirati da razmislite ovom tvrdnjom. Ako danas trenirate kao što ste trenirali jučer, tada ćete neizostavno zaostajati za onim kamoru kome ti ide. Šamo se različiti. Is because in the physical training, which is more important than ever, you train for the old principles about our training all the time, and not taking into account the different places and the individual capacity of the players. Kako biste se mogli zapitati, nije li jedan od razloga ili možda najvažniji razlog za slabije rezultate hrvatskih momčati u tome što se zapravo još uvijek provodi metodologija treninga do iscrpljenja, do otkaza, kao što se nekada treniramo, umjesto da se uvode neke nove metode. That's why it is important for the trainers to have a knowledge of how to be strained. 
Zato je jako važno da treneri danas imaju dobro znanje, dobro poznaju sve na načela fizičkog treninga, odnosno kondicijskog treninga. You might see the other day, it's no problem, I'm not going to have a head coach, and I have a special trainer, so there's no way to know anything about this training, because I have a special trainer. You might say, what's the matter, I'm the main trainer, 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 I'm the main trainer. But as, but as a head coach, you need, you need to have, have a knowledge of Aspen's training, so you know, you know if the business of training is actually uh, doing the right, the right thing, thing for players. players. Ali vi morate zapravo poznavati načela i ono što se radi u fizičkoj pripremi, kako boste mogli provjeriti ili radili vaš kondicijski trener kako valja. So what we have been doing in Denver, in Denver, in Denver, in Denver, is actually to really, really, really educate the trainer, give them scientific knowledge about the specific training in order to make them perform the most optimal training. Zato što mi danas u Danskoj insistiramo na tome da sve trenere temeljito educiramo o fizičkoj i kondicijskoj pripremi kako bi mogli postići najbolje rezultate i efekte. So, Future trainers should not only be former elite players, they should also have a knowledge about the technical but also the mental and physical. The first thing is that 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 the first thing već mora biti vješt i u razvijanju mentalnih vještina i sposobnosti i u kondicijskom trenerima. So the physical trainer of our team should not be the physical therapist, should not be the local guy from the physical center, if this guy don't have the knowledge of how to handball, because they may be able to transfer the physical training to the mad situation, and if they don't know anything about the mad situation, Dakle, i kondicijski treneri moraju jako dobro poznavati rukome. To ne moraju biti, ne mogu biti samo vodići po fitness centrima, nego moraju dobro poznavati rukome kako bi mogli ono što rade na fizičkoj pripremi prenijeti, transferirati u aktualna znanja rukometna koja se mogu primijeniti na igralištu. So the correlation hand correlation should educate the trainers, trainers so they have, they have knowledge, knowledge about all aspects, aspects also the physical training. training. And that, and that is, is you, because, because you are the best trainers, trainers in the correlation hand correlation. And that, and that is, why is why I hope, I hope that they will uh, not, not watching watch your mobile phone, phone, phone all through, through this presentation, presentation and try and to try visit, visit a little about the hand correlation. Zato svi vi ovdje najbolji treneri u Hrvatskoj trebate naučiti nešto o načelima kondicijske pripreve, fizičkog treninga i molio bih vas da ne gledate u mobilu na telefone, u svoje telefone, nego da poslušate prezentaciju i koncentrirate se. Ok, budite ljubazni, maknuti svoje pametne telefone. So, so, you might you ask, might ask here, here, why do we train in this physical training? training? Of, course, of course, we will train, train because this physical training, training, if you're physically fit, fit that, that could avoid, avoid the injuries for players, players. And, you and you will also be able, able to train more and play more play 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 matches. matches. That is, that is true, true, but, but the, the actual, actual Course is a is course, course to prepare, to prepare for a match. That's very important to say. We need, we need to get the players, players so they can sprint more, be faster, faster in a grip, jump, jump high, 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 be more be strong, strong in the physical presentation, and also are able to do 60 minutes. Now, now I'm getting, getting a little bit of 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 a little b
five, five minutes ten years, Croatia has in, in incredible players, 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 but we know, we know uh, uh, about five, five minutes. minutes. After, After that, that, we will, we will win, win because Denmark, Denmark at the moment, moment is a special position, position that they can keep on for 60 minutes, minutes and Croatia cannot. cannot. That, that is actually, actually not, not correct, correct that, that is the truth. Uh, uh, so, so, you might, might think about, about that. So, so as, as you know, know, we have a basic type of training. We have a lot of training. We have a lot of training. We have a lot of training. And we have strength training. And today we're going to talk about anaerobic training. And I will say later that most of the anaerobic training should be performed on the court with the ball. And here you can see me as a physical coach preparing the female Brazilian national team before the Olympic Games on home ground in uh, Rio in 2016. Just uh, to remind you uh, <coughs> about the anaerobic energy turnover, we don't want to make this into a physiological uh, lecture, but just as you know, the anaerobic processes, we have the alactacid processes where we do not produce any lactic acid. We have small amounts, small stores of ATP and creatine phosphate in the muscle. You have only energy for a couple of seconds. That's why we have stored sugar in terms of glycogen, and that can actually produce ATP, but the waste product will be lactic acid. I hope that you have heard about lactic acid. When lactic acid is accumulating, you will be very, very tired in your muscle. So just us to remind you, here we have the percentage contribution from aerobic and anaerobic processes during different running distance when the intensity is maximum in relation to the duration. And as you can see, if you have only uh, five to 10 seconds of work maximum, the anaerobic processes will actually account for more than 90% of the energy. Meaning when we have all these, all these uh, small incident in team handball where we are actually very intense, fast breaks, breakthroughs, it's almost anaerobic processes. That's why we need to train anaerobic training. However, as you can always see, also see, if you go to, on the blue curve, you can see 60 minutes. That is the duration of a team handball match. And you can see at that point, almost over 90% of the energy comes from aerobic processes. So elite team handball plays moderate to high demands on the intermittent, the interval endurance capacity, but the anaerobic processes can be very, very high in brief moments. And that's why we need to train them very much. So an important thing is how can we assess the training intensity? How can we know that the training intensity is the right thing? So what we normally use when we have talk about anaerobic training, we talk about percentage of maximal intensity. And maximal intensity is not what you can do in a 100 meter dash, because even using bold, will be tired at the end of the race. Maximal intensity, you can only do that for a few seconds, just as you know. And we, we are not supposed to talk about uh, aerobic processes, but just as you know, because you are educated, you know when you read articles about this, you'll read that we can assess the training intensity and when we are doing aerobic training in percentage of maximum oxygen on take. Uh, relative workload or in percentage of the maximal heart rate. So this is the most important slide for the whole day. This is the intensity scale. What is most important in all kinds of training, especially in anaerobic training, is to train with the right intensity. 
And here you see on uh, the x-axis, you see the maximal intensity, 100%. You can do that for two or three seconds. And slow down the, the dotted line, you can see the intensity corresponding to the maximum oxygen uptake. Let me take into you, if you're running on the treadmill, you can maybe run, depending on who you are, 15 or 16 kilometers, then you get your maximum high, uh, oxygen uptake. But you can sprint with 33 or 35 percentage. That is the maximal intensity. I was once physical trainer of a team who won the Olympic gold. And in the summer period before the Olympic Games, the players got an individual program, and they were supposed to do some short aerobic intervals of 10 to 15 seconds and repetition 10 to 15. Then the coach, the head coach called me a week later, said, we are in trouble. Everybody is not in shape. They did two to three, and they were totally tired. Yeah, but they were supposed to do it at 90% of the maximal heart rate. But what had this head coach said to the players? He said 90% of maximal intensity. And that is a completely different intensity. And that is why they could not do more than two or three uh, repetitions. So from maximum oxygen object up to the maximal intensity, you have the anaerobic area, and below you have the aerobic area. And as you can see now, there's three kinds of anaerobic training I will tell you about. Why are they overlapping? They are overlapping because if you do the exercises with the ball, if you are a player and you have the ball, you will be more active in a drill than if you don't have the ball. That's why we need to have a variation area because you cannot have the same intensity all the time during a drill, especially if you have a lot of players in a drill. What? What? Okay. So remember this uh, intensity scale very much. That's very important. So if we look at the energy turnover for anaerobic, we have aerobic power. That is uh, the same as maximal aerobic energy turnover. We can train that with production training. And we have aerobic capacity. That is, if you know physiology, the maximal size of the oxygen deficit, we can, we can train that with maintenance training, also called tolerance training. Let me give you an example so you know these three kinds of training in handball. Speed training, of course, is a fast break, or it's a fint, uh, a breakthrough. You do that for only a few seconds. That's speed training. Production training, remember the word, you need to produce as much energy as possible over a little longer period. For instance, if you do a fast break, you lose the ball, you do a fast retreat, and you get the ball, you have to do a fast break again. You need to be almost maximal. You need to produce as much energy as possible. Maintenance training, tolerance training is Let's say you want to play very offensively in the defense and very really quick in the offense with a lot of quick uh, throw off. So you play very, very uh, fast for five minutes. You get tired in your muscle, but you need to go on. You need to tolerate the fatigue in the muscle so you can keep on playing at fast pace uh, for a longer period. You train that with tolerance or maintenance training. That is the three free situation you have in anaerobic training. Comprende? Yeah. No.
nobody is saying anything. Maybe uh, they are at the mobile phone. So let's see about the training principles in anaerobic training. It's conducted at supramaximal training intensity, meaning that all intensity are over the intensity corresponding to VU2 max. Also, that is why all anaerobic training is performed as interval training. Do you know what interval training is? No, not just one, one. Come on, one out of 600. Or interval training is either. Yeah, with this. That's one. We will have a beer afterwards. Uh, so I will tell you what interval training is. The purpose of interval training is to increase the total amount of exercise. Let let us have an example. A guy who can run for 10 minutes and then he is finished on a certain speed. If you run in the same speed for two minutes, take one minute of break, two minutes again, one minute of break, maybe he can do seven or eight repetitions, meaning that the total amount will be 40 or 60 minutes. That's why we do interval training, to increase the total amount of very intense training. And also for another reason that interval training, we can vary the training very much. And also with physical training, we don't need to train the same way all the time. Change the variation on the training, just like in technical and tactical training. So key points in interval training, primary used when training with high intensity, physical and mentally demanding, should be varied in form and settings. Do not do interval training. Also, when you do it off the court, the same way all the time, vary the training, how you run or how you do exercises. And in the pauses, in the pauses between the repetition, you should do light exercise, jogging. Studies have shown if you do light exercises, active recovery during the breaks, you can perform more repetitions. So when you are finished with an interval, don't just stand there, do some jogging, do some active recovery, and then you can do more repetitions. And if you do it in the training as the last thing, it should be uh, followed by recovery activities. Uh, uh, jogging and stretching and things like that. Let's go back to the training principle of uh, anaerobic training. Like I said, active recovery, the level of activity during the pauses is decisive for how a large amount of training that can be achieved. And it's often difficult to find the right training intensity. You have probably all trained with your players formal training outside on the road in the forest and you have a heart rate monitor, right? Right? No? But anaerobic training lasts no longer than one or two minutes and in that time the, the load uh, on the player is not reflected in the heart rate because it takes one minute, one and a half minute before the heart rate will actually reflect the, the load. So you cannot use the heart rate as an indicator in anaerobic training. You can do that in aerobic training, but not in anaerobic training. So also, like I said, don't use the heart rate. It's not a good indicator for the training intensity. So. An important thing also is uh, anaerobic training is effective exclusively in the muscle fiber activated during training. So we have done in our lab, we have taken and put some electrodes on the muscles of the players, let them out on the track, run a 100 meter dash, and we could see 
which muscles was active in which uh, coordination. But if you do that inside with a handball player who has the ball or just looking for the ball, we can see that the coordination is different. Meaning, if you want to be fast in handball, you need to train with the ball and move with the coordination that you are doing during the match. I have seen, I have done it much myself when I was playing, sprint training without the ball, formal, you know, maybe also outside in the track. Don't do that. The transfer is very bad. That is not the way to train speed training in handball because anaerobic training has an effect exclusively in the muscle who is activated during the exercise. So that's why training should mainly be performed on court with the ball. That requires motivation and concentration. That's why it's physical and mentally demanding form on training and should only be formed in a systematic amount on an elite level. If I had a team who trained twice a week, I will say that they should have some basic strength training, some basic aerobic training, but I won't train systematically anaerobic training with that kind of a team. Only when we come up on a really high elite level, systematic amounts of anaerobic training. I'm working a lot here. A good training. So, more about the training principles. Why, why is it important to train with the ball? Three reasons. Three reasons. The first reason we have already discussed, the muscle coordination and the specific muscle group used in team handball will be trained. But also, we can, we say that in Denmark, we can, we can hit two flies with one stroke because if you do the anaerobic training with the ball, you can also include technical and tactical training, right? And the third reason is that training with the ball is more motivating for most players instead of formal training. So, are there situations where it's necessary to train anaerobic training without the ball? Yeah, if, if you are not in a, an elite club, maybe you don't have time and space to train. You only have two uh, training sessions in the hall. Then you should use the, the, the track for anaerobic training instead. And also, some of your players might not be technically very good. So when you do anaerobic training with the ball fast, they will lose the ball all the time because they are not technically good. So maybe these players, once in a while, should train anaerobic training without the ball. So they can be loaded very hard. Yes, everybody is asleep, or are you still there? You're still there. Somebody is still there. So we go to the actual training. As you can see, we can divide anaerobic training in speed training and speed endurance training. And speed endurance training can be divided, as you probably had read in the article, in maintenance training or tolerance training and production training. And here you see the principal speed training. The time is 2 to 10 seconds. And the rest period, I will tell you why, is 10 times the exercise duration, meaning if you sprint for five seconds, you need to have 50 seconds of rest before the next repetition. That is the same production training. You can see that's a little longer time for 10 to 40 seconds. But the ratio between the exercise and the rest period is also 1 to 10. So if you make production training for 30 seconds, then the rest period should be 300 seconds. And then we have maintenance training. We don't need to have that much rest because we need to accumulate some fatigue in the muscle. 
So you can see that we, we work a little longer. We'll see that tomorrow uh, from 20 to, to 2 minutes. And the rest period will be from 1 to 5 times the exercise duration. Even though it's hard for you, we will start about speed training. That is the maximal explosiveness duration, 0 to 10 seconds. And production training, that was 10 to uh, 40 seconds. So now we go to speed training. And of course, there is a national female player on the picture because the last medal from the Croatian teams is actually from the female team because they beat Denmark and got the bronze four years ago. So there's only one speed in speed training that is maximal 100% all the time. If you don't sprint maximal less 80, 90%, you don't train speed training. So the intensity is at the dotted line here. And here I want to show you why the significance of the duration or the length of the rest period, period have been examined in a series of studies shown here. All the subjects ran 600 meters of sprint. Can you, can you translate this? Želi pokazati sada znanstvena istraživanja o treningu brzine u kojem su svi ispitanici strčali 600 metara najvećom mogućom brzinom, sprintali. And did you see the first, they did it in five different ways. They sprinted in five different ways. Radili su to na pet različitih načina. You can see the, the on top they did 15 times 40 meters. Dakle, uh, na prvi način je bio 50 puta 4 metra. And 40 uh, meters, metar, oh, sorry. 40 meters takes around six seconds we, and with 30 seconds of break the ratio between the exercise and the rest period was one to five. Uh, uh, omjer između rada i odmora bio je jedan naprama pet. Next one, they sprinted 20 times 30 meters. Uh, drugi, drugi način je bio da su 200 puta 30 metara trčali. 30 meters takes four seconds, meaning that the ratio between the duration of the exercise and the length uh, uh, duration of the rest period was 1 to 7, 1 to 8. Dakle, trebali su im 4 sekunde da sprintaju 30 metara, pa je omjer između rada i odmora bio 1 naprama 7, odnosno 1 naprama 8. And you can see number 3, that again is 15 times 40 meters, but now with 60 seconds of rest, meaning that the ratio now is 1 to 10. Treći način je bio ponovno trčati 50 puta 40 metara, ali je sada omjer rada i odmora bio 1 naprama 10. And the next one that did the same with 120 seconds of rest, and now the ratio is 1 to 20. Četvrti način je opet bio da je omjer između rada i odmora bio 1 naprama 20. Dakle, ti 120 minuta su imali odmora. And look at the results. Only when there was a relation to 1 to 10 or 1 to 20, the players were able to almost repeat the sprint time during repeated sprints. U eksperimentu je dobiveno da su samo oni, o, 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 oni, oni ispitanici koji su te, radili u omjeru rada i odmora 1 naprama 10 ili 1 naprama 20 bili u stanju maksimalnim intenzitetom izvesti sve, sva ponavljanja. You can see on the upper curve where the relation was 1 to 5, the speed time was increasing, meaning that the players were decreasing in performance. 
Dakle, u 1 naprama 5, u omjeru 1 naprama 5, vidimo kako brzina raste, ali uspješnost izvođenja ponavljanja je sve slabija. So, this study shows if you need to do sprint training effectively, the duration of the rest period should be at least 10 times the duration of the length of the sprint. Dakle, želimo li postići one trenažne aspekte kojima težimo, omjer između rada, intenzivnog, maksimalno intenzivnog rada i odmora mora biti jedan naprama deset najmanje. So this is a very clear example what I've been talking about. How to use scientific findings in making optimal training. Dakle, ovdje najbolje vidite kako se znanstvena istraživanja i otkrića mogu izravno aplicirati u trening, primijeniti u treningu. When I was playing in the best league in Denmark a couple of centuries ago, dok sam trenirao, who did you train? When I was playing in the best league in Denmark. Ah, okay, when you were playing, dok sam ja igrao prije dva stoljeća. We did this exercise. We should lie here. The guy, the trainer, it was taking his flute that we should sprint in the middle, to the middle, and then jog again, lie down and sprint again. Dakle, mi smo trenirali tako da smo tamo ležali na gol liniji, trener je zvižljaljkom dao znak, sprintali smo do sredine, pa smo onda opet legli, pa smo opet trčali do gol linije i tako smo ponavljali prelaženje igrališta. We should do that 15 or 20 times and what happened? After number three we couldn't sprint anymore, so it was not sprint training, it was speed endurance and we did not get any faster of that. Dakle, što se dogodilo? Mi zapravo nismo uspjeli razviti brzinu, nego smo uspjeli razviti izdržljivost, što znači da nismo ništa bili, nismo bili ništa brži. And I see in a lot of top clubs, even on national teams still, that they don't take the rest period seriously, they don't give the players enough time to recover in the muscles for the sprint training to be effective. This is not good training. This is not speed training. Dakle, ono što uvijek ponavljam, kada radite trening brzine, morate ostaviti igračima dovoljno vremena da se njihovi mišići potpuno oporave, da dođe u stanje potpunog oporavka, da eliminiraju sumnječnu kiselinu, jer onda samo možete raditi na brzini, a ne na izdržljivosti. And in addition, speed training is complex. It's not only about fast break, but you can also be have to be very quick when you are making side cuttings, when you actually are making, making a fint or breakthrough. Try to develop great power in limited time frames over short distances. Dakle, ono što je bitno za brzinu, trening brzine, ma nije on, ne sastoji se on i nije važan za uspješnost u rukometu, samo brzo trčanje, već je jako važno i koliko brzo igrač reagira ili prije prodora ili u obrambenim akcijama. Maybe we can stop there. Ok. Yeah. So, there's three, uh, three key factors in the concept of speed. Reaction speed is, of course, the ability to react quickly at the sparring time. Acceleration is, of course, the ability to quickly increase the speed from zero to maximum. And maximum running speed, which is the player's high speed. If you look at track and field Usain Bolt, he will reach his maximum speed after 50 or 60 meters. But there's no handball court who is 50 and 60 meters. So handball player should not train maximal running speed. They should train reaction and acceleration. That's it. You don't need to have a high maximal running speed because you are sprinting over short distances. And again, most of the training effects of speed training, like all anaerobic training, 
occurred in the muscle during training. But also, it's very important that speed is not only physical. Good team handball players need also to improve their ability to anticipate, evaluate, and decide in different match situations. You probably have some players on your team who might not be the, the fastest on the team, but they are very good to anticipate evaluate and decide when to run. So you need to give them a stimulus who's not a flute. They should react in speed training on a stimulus to evaluate a situation. If you do like this, that's not the stimulus you will get in a match. You need to uh, give them the possibility to be, a to be able to increase their ability to anticipate, evaluate, and then decide. And then it's physical. That's why it's supposed to be with the ball, with, with a stimulus like in, uh, in the match. Not uh, the trainer standing on the court with a flute. Now, <laughs> now you must sprint. On court with the ball. And the last thing I will say that the training drills should perform the maximal effort with fresh muscles. And that's why you need to do sprint training in the beginning of the training session. Not at the end, in the beginning at the training session. Fresh muscle, long rest periods. Yeah, I, I talk about that. So, as you can see here, if you do uh, speed training exercises from two to five seconds, you need to have 50 seconds of rest. If you do longer sprints, five to 10 seconds, you need to have absolutely longer uh, rest periods because the ratio between the exercise and the rest must be one to 10. Now you can translate. Okay. So we go to key points of speed training. You need to warm up very good because when you are sprinting maximum, if you don't, you will get injured. Uh, can you repeat, please? I didn't hear. You it. need to warm up very effectively. Okay. Thank you. It requires high concentration and motivation. Maximal exercise time less than 10 seconds. Dakle, maksimalno vrijeme rada je kraće od 10 sekundi. Long pauses, exercise to rest or active recovery ratio. 1 to 10, at least 1 to 10. Dakle, intervali rada izmijenjuju se s intervalima odmora koji moraju biti iznimno dugi, najmanje 10 puta duga trajati koliko je trajala vježba. Few repetitions. Dakle, relativno malo ponavljanja. Should be performed in the start of the training session. I treba trening brzine provoditi na početku pojedinačnog treninga. Should be performed on the court with handball drills. Također ga treba provoditi na igralištu loptom. However, just as you know, speed training needs to be supplemented by strength and power training. Dakle, možemo ga zamijeniti cannot or can be supplemented. Sorry, Lars. Can it, can it be supplemented or cannot? It should be supplemented. Treba ga nadopuniti i treningom jakosti. If you are on the highest level, it's not enough for the players just to do sprinting on the court. They need to go into the gym and do a lot of power and strength training as well. So these things are uh, together. Dakle, osim rada na igralištu, moraju igrači provesti dosta vremena i u teretani, raditi na pojavećanju jakosti i snage. Everything is going nicely. Everybody is still awake. Now we have time for questioning.
Uh, you can do that in a Croatian language. Imali pitanja i kako vi ih slobodno ih postavite? Mi ajem ima mikrofon pa ćemo prevesti. Ili možete pričekati do kraja predavanja pa onda sažeti pitanja. Don't be afraid. Now you have the the possibility of asking questions about anaerobic training. Please do. Please do it in Croatian language. Nemojte se bojati, postavljajte pitanja slobodno o anaerobnom treningu. Evo tamo netko se javlja. Mene interesira koliki je postotak grešaka u toj brzinskoj izdržljivosti i to bih htio znati. Ok, the question is related to technical tactical accuracy. So, when you are working at this intensive maximum speed, how many mistakes technical are made? Do you know what's the percentage of technical mistakes? No, of course it depends on the team and which level the team are. I'm just saying that there is some teams who has some players with bad technical abilities and they will never uh, exercise with maximal intensity if all speed training should be performed with the ball. Sometimes some of these players should be doing formal sprint training without the ball to be able to uh, uh, tax them maximally. That we have to do because if they don't, they will lose the ball all the time. Dakle, odgovor je ovisi o ekipi koju imate i njihovoj vještini baratanja loptom. Dakle, postoje kod onih igrača koji su slabiji u vještini baratanja loptom, treba uvoditi i ovaj formalni trening. How much time? I beg your pardon. Ah, okay. Treba uvoditi formalni trening brzine, zato što ako budu radili samo loptom, oni jednostavno neće postići maksimalni intenzitet, niti će onda biti to pravi trening brzine. Dakle, to je, treba uspostaviti ravnotežu, vidjeti što tko može raditi. Please, dignite ruku, molim vas, koji imate pitanje. U odnosu na senzibilne faze razvoja igrača, omjer treninga? Question is related to the sensitive phases of growth and maturation. So, when to apply an aerobic training and what should be the ratio when we start to implement an aerobic training related to age categories? Yeah, systematic anaerobic training on a large amount, I will not do that before the players are 7 to 18 years old. Young players, should focus on coordination and technical aspect. And when you play handball with these uh, kids, 12, 14, and when they play matches, they will do anaerobic work anyway. Because as you will see now, you can train anaerobic capacity. You can train that very fast. And because it's physical and mentally demanding, there's no reason for, in a systematic way, to put that load on young players. I would not do that. Okay. Dakle, odgovor je da ga sistematski anaerobni trening ne bi trebalo raditi s igračima mlađima od 18 godina, budući da je on jako fizički i mentalno zahtjevan. Premda i mlađi igrači, igrači se naravno i 12 i 13 godina, oni rade anaerobno. You didn't tell us anything about about adaptation of the neural system in speed training. I didn't what, excuse me? To talk, you didn't talk about uh, neural adaptation of the... No, I will have something okay. about the effects later. Okay. Uh, yes? I have several questions, but one is related to the other. The first question is, koliko takvih treninga trebamo napraviti u pripremnoj fazi, dakle onih šest jedana priprema? 
Vlado Shola. Yeah. <laughs> he was, uh, Professor Lars was talking about you earlier. Vlado uh, uh, asked how many uh, training sessions of an aerobic uh, training should be implemented during the preparation period during the six or seven weeks we have for the preparation for the season. I will show you a little later because I have a training program to show you. Okay, next question. Okay, you may, Koliko, you may speak in English also. Ne, ne, ja, nek svi razum. Ovoga, ok, to ćemo saznat kasnije. Drugo pitanje, vezano isto za ovo. Dakle, ako igramo u ritmu uh, svaki šesti dan ili sedmi dan, koliko takvih treninga radimo u jednom tjednu, kad se igra svaki šesti dan, a koliko takvih treninga radimo u tjednu kad se igra svaki treći dan i koliko je faza i da li postoji faza odmora od takvog treninga prije važne utakmice? Ok, uh, the question is related to the periodization of training and uh, this is, uh, Vlado is talking about microcycle. If you are playing uh, in a rhythm of one match a week, uh, how many anaerobic training should be implemented during the week and when you are playing uh, two matches in a week, uh, how to program it. Also, uh, uh, should we have a rest after such a training? Uh, I should think that we are working together because I have a, I have a, a table about that later. Specially. Dakle, pokazat ću vam taj raspored i periodizaciju treninga i rada. So I think we will continue and, and we will go to speed endurance training. And as you know, the ability continuously to change pace and accelerate throughout the entire match of 60 minutes, that is a high important team handball. That is why we need to train speed endurance training because it's not like track and field, where we have to sprint one time. We have to keep on doing that also in the last 10 minutes. So not to be fast, that's the only thing. Uh, no, uh, but we need to be able to do it throughout the, the entire match. That's why we need speed endurance training. And you can divide that in production and tolerance training, like I told you before. Production training is improving the ability to perform maximally over a relative short period of time. Meaning, like I said to you, we have a fast break, we lose the ball, we have a fast retreat, we, we do a fast break. And we need to tolerate if we play for two, three, four, five minutes very intensely, the players got, get tires in their muscle but we train them so they can keep on playing on this intensity. We do that with maintenance or also called tolerance training. You need to be able to tolerate the fatigue in the muscle. Speed endurance training is in contrast to speed training always performed as the last thing in the training. Why? Because it's so hard that it's not possible to do anything afterwards. Not good to try to learn some technical, technical aspects. So always in the end of the training session. Production training, as you can see here, sometimes if you do it uh, uh, in a few seconds, it will be near speed training. But if you do it up to 40 seconds, it will be down to 60% of the maximal intensity. Big variation area because, as I told you, it depends if the players has the ball or not has the ball. And here, because of the ratio is 1 to 10, if you are exercising in the high area of the intensity, only 15 seconds, you will have more than 150 seconds of pause. And if you are in the lower area of the intensity, you will have 400 seconds, that's a lot of pause. Just to show you this figure, I can tell you tomorrow, the guy who are doing production training, they will be tired. But look here, they are not reaching their maximal heart rate. 
because the time of the exiled period is too uh, little, so the heart can actually uh, adjust to the uh, load on the muscle. So you cannot use the heart rate in anaerobic training because you can see here, they are very tired, they work hard, but they will not reach the maximal heart rate. I hope you understand that. So, key points of production training. Short exercise period from 10 to 14 seconds at 60 to 100 percent of maximal intensity. Dakle, kratki periodi rada od otprilike na razini 60% od maksimalnog intenziteta u trajanju od 10 do 40 sekundi. Long pauses, exercise to rest, active recovery ratio 1 to 10 at least. I također i ovdje koristimo duge pauze, najmanje omjer između rada i pauze treba biti 1 naprema 10. Normally perform at the end of the training session. Obično se izvodi ili primjenjuje na kraju pojedinačnog treninga. Should be performed on court using ball drills. We talked about that already. Također ga treba provoditi na igralištu loptom. Should be followed at the end of the training session with recovery activities with an intensity around 50% of VO2 max. Dakle, nakon treninga, produkcijskog treninga, trebaju slijediti vježbe za oporavak koje bi trebale biti na ispod razine, na razini maksimalnog primitka kisika. This is a very good example of how some teams use scientific results. Normally, you will see teams Recovery activities, they will jog like this, right? Dakle, možete u toj pauzi raditi, jogirati, trčkarati. You'll see teams uh, doing this, jogging very slowly. Dobro, oni trče lagano. There was some scientific result showing that the recovery will be better if you increase the intensity in the recovery to 50% of U2 max. Who tried that for the first time? Who was the first team to do that? Norwegian female national team, of course. Znanstvena istraživanja su pokazala da je oporavak puno brži kada se trčkara ili radi na 50% od maksimalnog primitka kisika. I tko je prvi to radio? To su prvi radili Norvežani. So if you see them running after a match or training, they are not jogging. They are running moderate speed because then they will recover faster. Dakle, kad vidite kako oni treniraju, onda vidite da ne trčkaraju, nego trče jednom normalnom brzinom i tako će se brže oporaviti. Please use the scientific results in your training. Make optimal training. To je uporaba znanstvenih istraživanja i otkrića, spoznaja u treningu za stvaranje optimalnog treninga. We need to get the creation handball better so they can beat everybody except Denmark. <laughs> okay, moramo podići. <laughs> moramo podići hrvatsku reprezentaciju da mogu pobijediti sve osim danske naravno. Okay. Last form of training is maintenance training, also called tolerance training. As you can see, the time is a little longer. So the intensity is a uh, uh, not so high, but still over uh, the view to max intensity. So we are up in the anaerobic area. So if we are high in the area, 90% of the intensity, short exercises, maybe pauses one to five, number of repetitions, of course, high. If we go lower and increase the duration, we will see 30 seconds, the pause will be 150 seconds. And if we go even lower, as we will see tomorrow, we will see exercises of 60 seconds. Then we need to have a pause about four minutes before the players are ready again. And again, you can see doing tolerance training 
even though that you are very tired, the players are not reaching the maximal heart rate, meaning that you cannot use the heart rate in aerobic training to assess the training intensity. So, key points. Ključne točke treninga tolerancije zamora. Slightly longer working periods up to two minutes with slightly lower intensity compared to production training. Dakle, vježba se dulje malo od dvije minute intenzitetom koji je intensity is lower or higher than lower. Intenzitetom nižim nego li u produkcijskom treningu. Relative short exercise to rest actual period, one to three with the ball, three to five without the ball. Odnos između rada i odmora je jedan prema tri kada radimo loptom i jedan prema pet kada radimo bez lopte. Must be performed at the end of the training session. Dakle, i ovaj se trening primjenjuje na kraju pojedinačnog treninga. Should be formed on the court using handball drills. I opet ga radimo na igralištu loptom. Just like production training should be followed by active recovery activities at an intensity around 50% of U2 max. Dakle, i o, kao i kod produkcijskog treninga treba ga treba slijediti o vježbe oporavka. So, o, dobro. This is this is anaerobic training with the Brazil national team. And this is how they look after the training. You know? <laughs> Working hard, trying to get a medal. So the next one is very important. All exercises with a ball can in principle be suitable as long as they have to handle like movements with the right intensity, the right duration, and the correct pause between an appropriate number of repetitions. Tomorrow, I will show you some exercises. But you are so much better training than me, so you will probably sit and say, my God, what bad exercises this guy from Denmark has. Okay, it's no problem for me. As long as I have learned you to have the right intensity, the right duration, the correct powers, and the correct number of repetitions. You can decide which kind of team handball drills you want to do, but please do it in this way that we have been talking about today. I will show you some basic exercises, but promise not to laugh tomorrow. <laughs> so it's only the imagination that set the limits. So we come to your question now. Because how much time we have? I beg your pardon? How much time we have? I don't know. I uh, don't have a watch. Yeah. Effects of anaerobic training. We could talk about that in a long time, but you probably won't listen or don't remember. But anaerobic training has a lot of effect on the muscle. But what is important related to your question here, and you can see that the nerve muscle interaction, the rate of force development that you train in the strength training room, the rate of anaerobic energy release will actually increase the speed. And the time to exhaustion that you can keep on working for 60 minutes, you can increase by increasing some of these things that you might not know the number of um, uh, sodium potassium pumps, the buffer capacity, and lactic acid transport capacity. But now we come to the most important thing. Here we have some of the effects of aerobic and anaerobic training. Aerobic training is changing the heart size, the blood volume, the muscle capillaries, and you can, do, you can see it will take weeks or months. The, the sodium potassium pumps, the power capacity, the glycolog uh, glycologic enzymes, it will take days and weeks. 
what is the effect of this? The effect is that you can train your anaerobic ability very, very fast, but you will lose it fast as also. So you don't need to train anaerobic training in the summer period because you can train it in three or four weeks. So when the season is approaching, you're playing the first match on the 1st of October, you can start in the end of August. You don't need to train it in June or July because if you are on two weeks on holiday, you have lost the anaerobic ability, but you can train it up very fast. And that's very nice because it's so hard to train mentally and physically. Don't train anaerobic training all year round. Train when important matches or tournament are approaching. Look here. You can see here the preseason. Five is very high priority. One is very low priority. Look up speed endurance training and speed training in the preseason, the 1st of May. One number is one week. Four numbers in what is one month. So from May to June, one, June, one. Then we are beginning a little, and when we are approaching the start of the season, the 1st of September, you can see the last four or five weeks, we are beginning more and more to do anaerobic training. You don't need to train anaerobic training all year round. What? Okay, I just uh, translate this last sentence. Yeah. You, are you translating it? Yes, I did it. <laughs> okay. So, to answer your question, I have here as in-season program, I hope you can see it. Can you see it? No, no. It's too small, but it will be, it will be visible uh, on uh, the city. Here in the first row, there is, if you are playing one match per week, and the, the second row is if you are playing two matches a week, and let's say you are playing on Sunday, there will be free and recovery training on Monday, and maybe you have two uh, training sessions on uh, Tuesday, and uh, Thursday, and you will train anaerobic tolerance or anaerobic production training on Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, on Friday, you will, you, will, uh, you will have some aerobic training and some strength training, uh, maybe some technical training on Saturday and match on Sunday. Meaning, an in-season program from an elite team will be two times a week, and if you play Sunday, Sunday, it could be Tuesday and Thursday, not the day after and not the day before the match, and not two days in a row. And if you are playing two matches uh, in a week, you do some uh, aerobic training on Monday after the match on Sunday, then... Um, um, then you do uh, a normal technical training on Tuesday. You play on Wednesday, and you have training on Thursday for the individual, for the players who have not been playing that much. And then you can, then you can have the challenge training on Friday and a little training on, uh, on Saturday and then match on Sunday. Then you only have one a week because you have the match on Wednesday. Maybe if you have some players who is not playing on Wednesday, they can do some of the intense training on Thursday. But the others, they will do it on Friday. So a match Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday will mean that you have anaerobic training, production or tolerance training on Friday. That is enough. But you need to prioritize. We could talk about that because you do that up to a serious matches where you want to peak. When you don't want to peak or playing with bad teams or whatever, you can take the anaerobic training out and put some 
aerobic high intensity training and then you when you're approaching the important matches again you include it again like this is that an answer enough we can talk about uh, afterwards uh, Lux, sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, we usually do not uh, load uh, every player on a team equally. So uh, playing a match is a kind of an aerobic uh, loading for players. Yeah. But there are some players who are sitting, substitutes who are sitting on, on bench. Yeah. So what about them? How to compensate for their not having such a load as the first uh, lineup? You can see it. here playing two matches a week. You can see here on Thursday, if you can look at that now, uh, individual physical needs, a lot playing time, less playing time in yesterday match. So, of course, you need to take care of that all the time. Mm -hmm. But that has nothing to do with anaerobic training. That has something to okay. do with the planning of the training. <laughs> so we can talk about that another uh, time. Just to say it in Croatian, please. Pitala sam Larisa, s obzirom na to da nisu svi igrači jednako opterećeni utakmicama kod ovog planiranja i programiranja treninga, kako uopće kompenzirati, dakle, tu nejednako opterećenje. On kaže, naravno, da to nije pitanje anaerobnog treninga, dakle, pitanje organizacije treninga i rada. Okay. Thank so, you. luckily, you can turn on your mobile phones in a little while because <laughs> now we are approaching the end. Dakle, you are lucky. But before we go, I will give you one take-home message, and that will be the last thing I said. In contrast to aerobic training, Anaerobic training should not be performed all year round for team handball players. Dakle, za razliku od aerobnog treninga, anaerobni trening ne treba provoditi s rukometašima cijele godine podjednako. So, thank you for your attention. Hvala na pažnji. And if you're still here, any questions? Imali možda još kakvih pitanja? Bilo je neko pitanje tamo gore, nešto. If anybody of you have questions, I will be here until Sunday. So just come to me and we can talk about if you have any questions or problems. Feel free to contact me. Ovdje sam do nedjelje, pa budu slobodni se mi prići i možemo razgovarati o čemu god želite što se tiče treninga. Thank you. Thank you. Vidimo se u 13 sati, mi nastavljamo dalje prema rasporedu.